Alright, we'll review Gotham's two openings for black, or two of them, and then we'll see if they work for us. Do against White can also play knight f3. White could also theoretically play bishop e2, bishop d3, right? There's too many move orders to cover, so it's important to understand what you're doing. Great, right. this is still kind of a sign that they're maybe gonna castle queen side, but most likely not, because this pawn can very kind of like boxer style approach, yeah, yeah. you know, hands in front of your face, anticipating any pawn coming forward, and you're totally fine here. There's nothing to worry about whatsoever in this position. Uh, and you, you'd be all right, I mean, uh, this setup by White is very common, right? Two, all four. I just have forward, to remember and you're this. totally fine here. There's nothing to worry about Break whatsoever in this C5. position. Uh, and you, and that's why it's kind of like the ultimate perfect setup for us. The king is on the safe side. In chapter two, the king is on the dangerous side for White and for Black because when the king is there, we can attack it, and all these pawns are going to fly toward our king. Right now, those pawns are not going to fly toward our king because that would open the White king. So this is a little bit more of a of a peaceful chapter. And you just have to know that this is kind of the setup that you want. You need to know when to play bishop b7, knight d7, when to play knight f6, and... Alright. Uh, the approach known as... Bears. Now, what I want you to remember in these positions is that flexibility seems to be endless. White can play a lot of these moves in a lot of different move orders. So your game plan looks relatively similar. You are going to play a6, which is a very useful move and flexible move, preparing the move b5 like this. And now you're going to monitor what white is doing. You're going to monitor where white is setting up the king before you commit. And you want to maybe be careful with how fast you castle in some positions. You want to be careful in how quickly you start doing this if white is not committing the king this way. So. Let's just take a look at our main line and then let's work backwards. So what I've included here is white stopping us from playing the move b5. This is generally white. I like knight c6. d5 is really not a concerning move. Uh, the thing about d5, believe it or not, is you can actually, and in most cases, just retreat at a lot of advantage here. So the pawn on a4, it is significant mm. e7 square. You playing the move variation that I have here involves you playing the move e5. So, uh, d5 is really not overly concerning. Uh, the variation that I have here involves you playing the move e5 and then rotating your knight back to the, the e7 square. This is one and very one very specific type of move order which involves the pawn on a4. It is significantly more common uh, for white after bishop to e3 uh, to play f3, queen d2, and long castle because uh, that is the most aggressive approach. You trade and then you pawn storm us. White can play a preventative measure approach uh, with moves like a4, which is what this first uh, chapter is about. And when white does that, you're looking at knight f6, knight c6, and playing the move e5 as quickly as you can to gain center control uh, as well. Here, absorb the pressure retreat the knights and you already know what's next e5 getting into the middle if d5 you could go knight e7 but this is a rare case you could actually just go straight into the middle of the board and on your next move f5 f4 opening up the position this is a nice idea you should investigate a little bit deeper in the study here uh and um yeah let's uh let's kind of take another look at what, what, what something else white might play that's considered a sideline. White might also play bishop f4. Nothing really special changes here after the move bishop to f4. You can play a6. I like the fact that this is hanging, so I, I, I'm not hanging, but you can exploit it very quickly with the move knight c6. If white plays d5, uh, then we have a very nice trick here, e5. A rare moment we can throw this move in and we don't even need to retreat because the bishop is on f4. Bishop f4, it's not a great square for the bishop combining London play with uh, with modern play. Uh, we already Let's go ahead and see what the... Now and then with bishop 2f4, just remember knight c6. And bishop g5 isn't really doing much. I like a6 here and going for b5. If you want to combine your plans, you can. But if you play knight c6, d5, there is no e5. There is no bishop. You just hang a queen. Oop, you hang a queen. So don't do that. There are study because I think that you should know what to do when your opponent doesn't let you play b5. In most of the positions we are going to look at, white is going to allow us to play the move b5, and then from there, by white. 
Hmm. So let's take one more look at video for. two. Uh, so we solidify that and uh, only threaten to jump in at any moment. Cannot shove it all into bishop d3. Right? There's too many move orders in that knight f6. Fine here. There's nothing to worry about whatsoever. And the, the way you're supposed and this is just kind of like the ultimate perfect setup. The setup really does not change. Knight d7 and then push the most of the time they push the c common way of playing the position. Rare, rarely do they end up looking like that. So let's find out what, what happens. Oh, and it gives us white for the third time in a row. Oh, wait. Um, what is this opening? He wants to go here, the perk. Hmm. Okay, well, we don't know this line so well. It's a Sicilian, isn't it? Yeah. It's a Sicilian line. We might not castle at all now because he's jammed us. Hmm. Okay. If he wants to play. Let's see. And we're in trouble. <laughs> If we castle into that, we could be in a lot of trouble. Take. See, he's going to do it. Hmm. <laughs> One way to open this up. So we go G4 and give away a pawn. Wow. Hmm. This isn't working out so great for us. He's like, come and get us. I'm not budging. And they launched an attack on us. Ay, caramba. We might castle. We might castle this way. See that happens when you pre when you prepare th knowing you're going to be black and it gives you white again. <laughs> it's like all our preparations down the drain and we're stuck in a we're stuck in a Sicilian line. We got to go over a Sicilian line like uh whatever he did. We got to go over this in the the next Hmm. Let's see, he went he went D six knight F six. Basically he's doing the G six modern, but he's turned it into Sicilian. Okay. Okay. We're gonna come back here and go after that pawn right there. We're gonna go after that pawn right chair there. And try to hang on for the win. He's going to go there. Hmm. 
He goes there, we take this part. We got a castle some point. Maybe here first. Oh, we didn't get the castle in time. We didn't get the castle in time. That's horrible. Here, here, and now. Mm. Oh, he's going to go there. I have a feeling he's going to go there. So we'll want, in this case, we'll want this. I want to go here and then take with the rook there. Seems like we're hanging off our draw now. We have to activate this rook for sure. But then he can go here. Yeah, he could take... He's got some problems, too. So we have two knights. He has a bishop. Good move. Good move. Hmm. If I went here and was him... I just want to activate this. And now that this rook has been inactivated, what if I went up here and just went here? Or I could just go here and here with access to there. Or uh, actually access to there. And then there and there. He'd probably go there. Hmm. If I go here, he could actually go there and check me. Because I'm pinned. Hmm. I could go here if he takes. Let's just do it. When you put your queen out in the front, expect the unexpected. I'm coming up with a move that says, I'm going to get your queen for three pieces or whatever. Take the rook. I take. Oh, actually, he wins my queen. This isn't good at all. Look. Take, take, take. Oh, no. He had it won. He had it won. Look. Take. 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 And he's much better. He's much better. That was a pure bluff. Not a bluff move. A bad move. Just take. When I take back. What he's seeing is what I'm seeing. That he's got to go over here. And then I just take. And then he could go there. There. And then, then he still wins that, but it's a bit late. Hmm. Wow. He had that one all wrong. I need to look at the moves much, much cl closer before I play them. Yeah, he outplayed. You know, he had a higher rating than I did. He just resigned. Hmm. That was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. Let's see where's. I had a huge lead right here. Right here, I had a huge lead. 
after he uh, he took. Right now was when to play. And if he went here, we go e4. Just say he took there. We got d4. Alright, he can't really move there, so. Just say he went there. Oh, he's got to move the rook. So the, the bot's just saying this position is much better for white. That would be mate. So that's just a strong position for white. So basically all our opening preparation with black was useless here. And we got lucky.